Time for another shoe review. We're gonna take a look at this one. Saucony Peregrine 7 Ice Edition. Winter shoe, let's go. So we runners, we have a lot of shoes and uh, there's always a need for a new shoe basically. And now the winter has come here to Norway and uh, starting getting icy on the streets and I'm looking at probably spending the winter here. I usually travel, but because of the worldwide situation, I am staying uh, in Norway probably this winter. So I needed a good shoe for winter running. And so I tried a few different shoes and I gave the Saucony Peregrine, I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, Peregrine 7 Ice uh, Shoe a try. It's obviously a winter shoe with the name Ice in it. Looks winter, wintry with the blue color. And uh, I've tried it now for a few runs and I must say I I like it. Uh, I, I've always had a problem with the shoes and that is that my foot is so wide in the middle. Uh, I've tried Ultra but they, they're typically wide in the toe box, not so much around the middle of the shoe though. Uh, I found that the Hoka wide shoes uh, fit me the best. So I, I'm taking a chance going into a different brand but you know I might as well experiment a little bit and it, as you can see it is actually quite wide there around the midfoot so it feels like it fits me okay. Uh, time will tell as I start getting into longer runs because I'm actually just building back up uh, after an injury so I know that as I get into the you know hour, hour and a half, two hour runs that's when the width of my foot and the potential narrowness of the shoe starts getting a problem so start becoming a problem so let's see if that happens or not I, I feel good in these shoes they're comfortable and they're not super light but they are you know they're not super heavy either uh, I think they're reported to be around 260 grams for a US size 9. I have a size 12 uh, which means that these are a little bit heavier than that but that's okay. Um, in terms of the overall shoe it's uh, pretty flexible there's not much support which is what I like I don't like too much uh, support uh, like a natural shoe and um, the cushioning is pretty dense, it's pretty hard. I'm, I'm now used to running in Hoka Clifton's, for example. Those are probably my favorite shoe. And I really enjoy the cushioning. So transitioning to this shoe, I've noticed that I'm missing a little bit of that cushioning. Uh, I find that to be a little uncomfortable. Um, but then again, maybe it's a good thing, you know, to, to actually uh, vary a little bit the amount of cushioning that you run on. But on the road it feels very hard, uh, very unforgiving, um, but on the trails certainly, and it is a trail shoe, uh, on the trails it feels good. You don't want to have too much cushioning on the trails because then you sort of lose control and contact with the ground I feel like. Uh, of course uh, these are supposed to be a run on ice and snow and when, when you get snow of course you get a little bit of cushioning from the snow so that's okay. What I'm looking for in a winter shoe uh, this shoe delivers. Uh, it has a uh, water resistant upper. There's a rubber tip here. You know, when you're on the trails, you're kicking into stuff on the trail. You don't want the shoe to just rip open. Uh, it has a little bit of extra rubber tip there. Um, and it feels warm and, uh, and dry. Well, of course, the main thing is going to be the sole. Uh, and so you have got, you've got really two options when it comes to winter running when you're running on ice and snow and that is uh, spikes or no spikes and if you're going spikes that's of course going to be the most secure and i'll see maybe i'll have spikes set in uh, put in in this into this shoe or maybe i'll have another shoe that i put spikes in and um, this shoe though has uh, the vibram sole and it's it's called arctic grip and you can see it's like this these uh things here in between the normal lugs there's these things which appear, which are supposed to then grab the ground a little bit more and provide a little bit more um, traction uh, on ice and i just got back from a run on ice and got to really test them and slide along a little bit of course if you're on pure ice and you slide across it of course you're still going to slide it's not going to grip 
the ice like uh, spikes would. Uh, so spikes are always going to be the safest option. Uh, I wouldn't do interval training on the on the ice with these. Uh, then you wouldn't need to have spikes, but ideally you'd probably want to stick to the treadmill maybe in the winter uh, or a track or something for like uh, for those really uh, fast sessions. But I did feel like definitely I slided less than I would in a normal shoe. In a normal shoe, just you just be all over the place, completely out of control. But this shoe allowed me to stay pretty comfortable. And most of my run was on semi-iced uh, pavement and the shoe provided really good grip i feel like and on the snow of course it has great grip uh, it's a trail shoe which is what you want really in a winter shoe if you're going to run on on snow and on ice and all this you know there's a lot of stuff on the road in the winter so a trail shoe is going to be better than a road shoe uh, in the winter i think uh, the heel to toe drop is four millimeters the offset so i'm used to running in like yeah four to five millimeters um, and that's what I enjoy. I used to run in ultra zero drop shoes. I, I transitioned to a little bit more of a heel drop because my I have some ankle mobility issues and I feel like having a little bit of heel uh, aids me in my running. So this feels on the very minimal side. It does feel like a very minimal shoe actually when I'm running in it uh, because I'm used to the Hoka Clifton that's the name in the Bondi, which is an extreme maximalist shoe. So in, compared to that, this is a minimalist shoe, although there are other shoes more minimalist, of course. Yeah, so my, my verdict is basically that this is a good shoe. I would recommend it, definitely. Uh, it's not my favorite shoe, definitely not. I don't feel like, it, it just feels a little bit too unforgiving, uh, especially on the pavement. But then there's a time and place for every type of shoe. And if you're heading on the icy trails, then that this would definitely be a lot better than a heavily cushioned shoe. For sure um, there's a link in the description that's an affiliate link to amazon where you can buy this shoe i have uh i'm not affiliated with Saucony, and i i get paid if you buy from that link but the price remains the same for you so it's a way for you to support the channel if you're interested go check that out in the meantime check out some of my other shoe reviews and uh, subscribe to the channel of course and if you're interested in coaching i offer uh, coaching for runners of all levels uh, customized training plan consultations subscriptions that sort of thing check out the link in the description to learn more thanks for watching i'm gonna go in the doors now it's pretty cold out here and i'm gonna have lunch all right see ya